Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial on BitCutter. In this video, I'm going to show you additional option that you can use to fire triggers. So let's create a MIDI channel and also another audio channel. Let's set the MIDI channel to run Atom version two and let's activate the launch straight away as well. And let's load on the first audio channel, something like PIPA. Now let's duplicate that channel like so and uh, we have another version instance of pipa so in this one we change the preset to uh, something like bap like that now we connect atom to both instances of pipa like that and we go inside atom and we create some notes which will be played so something like that perfect let's click play to listen Okay, perfect. Now let's disconnect also the output to my headphones on the second channel. I want to hear only the first one. Let's load now BitCutter as an insert effects on the first uh, um, channel. Oops, like so. And then let's use the multi bus option for the second one so that we can ensure we use input channel number two, like so. So let's open BitCutter, let's reset it to a default preset. Let's click set. Okay, perfect. And if we click play on the transport control, we will not hear anything. We see the two input channel signals here. Okay, let's click stop. Now let's go to the input tabs. Let's select input bus number one associated to ch input channel number one. And let's click on input bus number six and associate that to, to input channel number two. Now let's go to the trigger page. In previous video, I never mentioned this input slider here. I always increased the sensitiveness and I left this down to I1, which stands for internal one, as is written there. That meant that this trigger sensitiveness or the trigger was listening to internal one input, which is associated to input bus number one. So you can change that to one to eight. And then after eight, you can say, okay, for that input bus, which in this case, we have number six selected, if you would, the trigger associated with that input bus will listen to signal coming from input channel number one or two. Let's set it to input channel number two. So for input bus number one, for which uh, uh, we will be recording input channel number one, we are having a trigger which will listen or to input channel number two one instead. So this gives you more option in terms of how you fire different triggers associated to in different input buses, which have different input channels associated in terms of the audio that will be recorded. So let's start with input bus number one now. Let's increase the sensitiveness and let's click play. So as you can see, the signal is very low here, even if you put it to maximum. So one way to solve this is to use a band pass filter, which is at the front of the trigger. And you have two options here to set the band pass filter. One is the frequency and then the width of that filter based on that frequency. And when you have done that, you can adjust the sensitiveness related to that frequency in terms of how the trigger will be fired. So remember, it needs to go up to maximum for the trigger to be activated. Um, in terms of understanding what happens with the signal coming in, how that is filtered, you have a test button here. So you can use that now to set the frequency and the bandwidth. Of course, when you've done that, it is advisable that you adjust the sensitiveness. Otherwise, it will be always recording. Okay, so let's try. OK, 
Okay, we've done that. We exit test mode. Let's click play and we should start to see some recording. There. Okay, let's stop now. So let's do the same on input bus number six. So we click on test to listen to the audio, which will be filter by frequency and bandwidth. Let's click play. And we move off sensitiveness and now we adjust the frequency and bandwidth. Okay, now we have two input buses which associate one to input channel number one, and the other one to input channel number two, and we have also their corresponding triggers which are listening not anymore only on the internal input one, which is uh, corresponding to input bus number one, but they are listening to the corresponding uh, channel input channel number one for input bus number one and also to input channel number two for input bus number six in terms of what the triggers is listening to be fired. Um, other option that you can use is, uh, of course, if you don't want to determine the length of recording based on when the, the trigger is activating and deactivating, what you can do is set the length in bits. So you can go up here and determine what how, long, how many bits you have of recording for both input buses. And you can do something like that. So I set it very low, and now you should see and hear very low, a short recording. I'm going also to, to decrease the number of bits per step in the sequencer so that the playing of the sequencer here is faster, as you can see. So let's try again. Okay, let's stop. As you can hear, there are some clicks when the sound is played through each different cells, and that is because the audio goes up immediately and then is also truncating immediately. To avoid that, you can, you can use an envelope where you can decide what is the attack and what is the release. So the attack will be uh, um, will act when the trigger is activated and the release will act when the trigger is deactivated. And that will give you a gradual ascending and descending of uh, um, the output signal, which will re avoid or remove those clicking. So let's try. Let's do it for input bus six as well. Okay, so let's summarize what we have learned in this video. So we have, first of all, started to use different audio sources, in this case, two instances of people. Uh, we have configured them to use input channel number one and input channel number two. We have con configured input bus number one to uh, receive audio from input channel number one and input bus number six to receive audio from input channel number two. Then we have learned that uh, for each input bus, uh, we can change what the trigger is listening to in terms of signals to be fired and therefore be activated, deactivated. And for the first input bus, we set the trigger to listen to input channel number one. And for input bus number six, we set the trigger to listen to input channel number two. 
We also learned that when the signal is too low for the triggers to be fired, we can use a band pass filter and we can set the frequency and the bandwidth and listen it with the test option here to what that sounds like in terms of input that is pre-trigger pre-trigger and use therefore the sensitiveness when you have done selected the frequency and the bandwidth to adjust uh, the sensitiveness of the trigger itself corresponding to the frequency selected. And we also saw how to um, change the length in bits of what is being recorded instead of relying on when a trigger is activated, deactivated. And finally, we used the attack and release envelope options to gradually have um, recording um, uh, a, a signal being recorded and gradually having the um, output decrease which will avoid uh, clickings when the sequencer is playing in cells where recording has happened so you don't have rapid uh, ascending or descending or audio starting being to creating up abruptly which is why you use attack and release i hope you found this useful and see you in the next video thank you bye